Well, it's time for a little challenge. This boat doesn't have a windlass and um, I'm gonna try and see if I can lift the anchor without any assistance from Rosella. It's a little bit breezy, nothing crazy, but there is a bit of a headwind and there's also quite a good current running, which we'll have a look at now. So for those of you with a keen eye, you can see the current running there just from the water running past the anchor chain. But if we knock off some of this weed, and we can count the time it takes to get to the stern. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen seconds. So eleven meters divided by fourteen. 0 0.785 meters per second. And if we times that by two, 1.57 knots, more or less. It's a little bit less than that, it's probably about 1.53 or something. Uh, but yeah, it's a good kind of estimation. So one and a half knots, that's quite a, a strong current. So to give myself a fighting chance, I'm gonna turn on the engine and go ahead to take the weight off the chain. And we're fortunate we've also got an autopilot. So I'm gonna put that on auto and that will maintain the heading as I do that. Okay, I've got that on about a thousand revs. I may have to come back and forward a few times to play around with the amount of throttle there, but we'll see how this goes. I'm going to talk you through everything that's happening here. Don't misinterpret that. This is not meant to be some kind of how-to guide in any way, shape or form. I'm just working out what I'm doing here myself, just making it up as I go along. But I thought it'd be better for me to explain everything that's happening so that if anybody is interested in perhaps anchoring a larger boat without a windlass or maybe weighing anchor one day if your windlass is broken, some of the things that I'm talking about here might come in useful for you. So that's why I'm explaining what's going on here. I'm stopping occasionally to throw away bits of weed as they come up. The chain and anchor came up surprisingly clean, actually. I expected them to be covered in mud, but they weren't, probably due to the quite fast tidal flows in this area, cleaning off the chain and anchor as I was raising them. So I'm starting off hand over hand. I've got to stress that the engine is doing all the work here. The boat is being moved forward thanks to the engine. The heading is being held thanks to the autopilot. Throughout this whole process, Rossella is down below with Emma. So this is a completely solo retrieval of the anchor and chain. And I'm just switching positions a little bit, not because I have to, but because I want to. I'm trying to work out which is the best way to retrieve the anchor and protect my lower back at the same time. Working offshore, I know the importance of manual handling and I know how quickly and easily back damage can occur. So I'm just trying to work out the best way of doing this without putting too much strain on my back. You may not be able to see it very well, but on the port cleat at the bow there, there is a chain hook attached to a line. So I could have in this moment in time, I could have put the chain hook on the chain. That would have given me both hands free. But because the, the weight on there was, was minimal, I just held it in my left hand and took the chain off the cleat there to allow the chain to fall more freely into the locker. Again, I'm trying different positions here. And I'm about to use a different technique which makes me look like an idiot. There we are. 
So I'm using my quads here to raise the anchor. And as I'm dipping down, I'm walking my hands down the chain. To be honest, I think this is the best way to do this because there is there's basically no strain at all on your back. Your leg muscles are doing the work. And it was so easy that I didn't actually realize that I'd lifted the anchor there. I heard a bang, I thought, oh, what's that? And it was the anchor arrived at the bow roller. And it was so easy to lift that I didn't even realize that until I looked and saw what had happened. So this will be my weighing anchor technique, I think. So if you ever see some guy bobbing up and down in a very strange manner in an anchorage, it may well be me. So I'm just standing on the chain there. I've got my body weight on the chain, which is holding the anchor in position while I go through the pinning faff and getting it all secured. There, I'm taking the line off the cleat with the chain hook on and putting that inside the locker. And here I'm taking off the bungee which holds up the locker cover which once fell on my foot. After that little episode I decided to make sure that doesn't ever happen again to me or anyone else so we now have that secure when it's open. Well in all honesty that was a lot easier than I expected. That's a nice result. If anybody watching this has got some more tips feel free to comment below. I did have a chain hook ready there to take the weight off that if I needed to at any point. But yeah, like I say, it wasn't too bad. 16 kg DC anchor we've got. Um, I expected it to come up with a big ball of mud because we've been here for a couple of nights and through quite a few tides uh, with a range of six meters. But yeah, it all went well, so that's nice. Although we would like a windlass at some point. There's always something to think about as a parent, isn't there? Yeah. Always. This is better. We've just switched off the engine and that means we can hear exactly what's going on with Emma, which is far more relaxing.
our planned timings worked out beautifully and we were able to go through the lock on free flow, which was a nice bonus. But most of all, we were extremely happy that Emma didn't wake up just before we came in to moor the boat. <laughs> Interview time. So Rosella, sailing stroke anchoring with a toddler, is it doable or not? Well it's definitely doable as we've done it and it was more easy, um, yeah more easy and less stressful than what I thought. Um, yeah so it went well, probably also because we tried to organise it well and time it right. Also the weather helped. Uh, yeah, sunshine so yeah. makes all the difference. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it went well. Yeah, well, I'm super happy. We had, Rosella had a bit of a mental block about going out because the first trip in this boat was a bit stressful, lots of things went wrong. Um, and that was like a baptism of fire for Rossella with tidal sailing. But that's all been resolved now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I knew that once we'd got out there and had a nice straightforward trip, Rossella would have felt much more comfortable and that, that has been the case. Fortunately, nothing nothing went wrong and it was very straightforward. So we just yeah. had a great time. The sail back was lovely, wasn't it, today? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really nice. And also, yeah, the boat basically, for, for what we're used to with the sea, in the sea, mm. the boats move oh, yeah. a lot. And yeah, I felt like just I was in port. <laughs> yeah, there's no movement at all in the anchorage because it's it's yeah. so protected. Um, so yeah, that was really nice. And you know, we can we were imagining having guests on board as well. Some of our families aren't too good with waves and yeah. get seasick. Whereas in a place like this, there's no problem at all. Yeah, you when there's nice weather as well. Yeah, so. you could easily have guests on board. So that's exciting for the future too. Yeah. 
So. But of course, you need to take in consideration the fact that you have a toddler with you, so it's not like, you know, like uh, in the past. Yeah, the whole world so. turns around them. Yeah. Everything we do, yeah. hours that we do things, everything has to all revolve around Emma. So, so yeah, it's definitely doable, always considering the baby <laughs> all the time. But yeah, we really look forward to new adventure. Yeah, we're and, getting better yeah. things in the future. So yeah. thank you for, for joining us. And we'll yeah. see you in another video yeah. very soon. We call it a night right now because we're very tired. And Emma is sleeping, that's why we're whispering, by the way. Uh, so this see you this is time. whispering. You want to hear the, the volume that Rosella talks at normally? It's crazy. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> let's call it a night. Okay. <laughs> Bye, Bye, guys.